Several neighbors told me that uh, they believe little Jordan Dumont lived in a violent and abusive home, and police just confirmed that they've been called to this home 49 times over the past three years. August 15th, 2016, 15 hours, 39 minutes, 12 seconds. Gaston County, now one more in Reynolds. What's the address of your emergency? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my oldest daughter, I was taking a nap. I just woke up and I can't find her anywhere. I went to the neighbors and they're not home and I don't know where she's at. How old is she? She's about to be four next month. I have a newborn with me too, one, a one-year-old, and I got her and I can't find my, uh, the other one. I What's really your... need some help okay. right now. Listen, listen to me. What's your address? Best Town Road. Have you looked under the beds and in the closet? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I called her name, though. I can't find her anywhere. I went next door. I, I've been okay. hauling her name outside. Right. I can't find her. She may have fallen asleep. I need you to go look under the beds and stuff while I start people yes. that way, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. All right. And you... Best Town Road? Yes, ma'am. Are you on a mobile phone? Uh, no, ma'am. It's, it's a landline phone, but it's a corded phone. Okay. Well, go ahead and take it with you, and let's go look under beds. Tell me no, your name. It's a, it's a corded... My name the corded phone, I, I have to put down the phone and go look. Okay. What is your phone number? Um, 7 -0. Yes, ma'am. What is her name? Uh, she was, I, I got it. I'm going to check real quick, okay? Don't hang up, though. Come right no, back to the phone. No, ma'am. Okay. Hey, what is up all my social climbing friends? It's Dustin and I am back with another video. I feel like it has been a very long time since I have sat in front of the camera like this to actually record a video that is not in my car. So I am so happy for that. I do apologize I am not in my filming room because Eric is actually playing Xbox in there right now and I didn't want to make him leave. So, so I'm recording in my bedroom at this point in time. My future videos will be back in my normal setup. So if you clicked on this video, you want to hear the story about Jordan Dumont. I do want to say before I get into this, this is a very, very sad story. If you are easily triggered about talks of children and death, this may not be the video for you. This is actually a case that happened in my hometown here in Gaston County, North Carolina. This was huge news here and it's still currently ongoing. Uh, there is an active case and we'll get more into that here in a little bit with this video, but I just want to say that this is a very sad and tragic story and you'll just see why this broke my heart into a million pieces once we get into it so without further ado let's talk about the case so on monday august 15th 2016 around 3 30 p.m jordan dumont's mother's boyfriend who was actually watching the child at this point in time called frantically to 911, stating that he woke up from a nap and he wasn't able to find jordan and you seen in the intro that I had the actual 911 phone call. I did cut part of it short because literally at the end of it, it's just him searching around the house, screaming her name and things like that. If you guys want the full and total 911 phone call, I will link it in the description box of this video. The person making this 911 phone call is actually named Williams McCullen. You will hear this name a lot. I will be referring to him as McCullen through the rest of this video. So shortly after this 911 call, police are dispatched out to the home and they're searching for little Jordan and a, a whole bunch of people actually show up and volunteer to actually look for her. This is actually in kind of like not a rural part of town, However, out where these people live at is very country. There's like actually old gold mines and things like there that could be a very big hazard for children that were so young. Keep in mind, Jordan is only three years old. There are like wells out here. There's mines. There's all kinds of things that any kind of child younger than the age of 10 really should not be left unattended to in this area, really. I mean, honestly, if you have children, you should be watching them at all times. So around 100 people show up to help search for Jordan and help the police and they're looking. There's a helicopter in the sky. They're looking in a pond to see if maybe Jordan had fell into this pond. There's a pond on the property and they find nothing. So it starts getting dark. They've actually turned up nothing for this first day of searching. So they searched from probably around 4.30 in the evening until maybe 9 o'clock at night, I think, because that's around the time it gets really dark here in the summertime. Remember, this is like dead in the middle of August. So they find nothing 
and then they continued the search next day. Now, before we get into the search the next day, I want to give you guys a little bit of background on the home life that Jordan was subjected to and the things that she went through because this right here absolutely baffles and boggles my mind to no end how all of this stuff happened and how this poor child was not actually like taken away and put into the custody of her father or someone else in the family or even foster care just absolutely blows my mind. You guys listen to this. In the past three years, the police had been out to this residence a total of 49 times. 49 times in three years. Three years is 36 months. So there were some months that the police were out there twice. Can you even imagine? Like, I, I just cannot think of why that would even be acceptable. Was there not any red flags or actually raised that would indicate that there's something really, really bad going on? During the past three years, there had also been about five welfare cases opened up concerning Jordan and her little sister and all of these cases were just closed out and they were just brushed over and no one really actually paid attention to it. They seen that everything was fit or they allegedly uh, claimed that everything was fit for a child and they were just closed out by the state and nothing further happened. Upon researching all of this I did find out that the neighbors actually had said that multiple times they had seen Jaylene arguing with Mr. McCullen and there was one instance that someone said that she was just begging him not to hit her and by hitting her I think the person that actually said this they meant Jaylene not actually Jordan I could be wrong there was also another instance where Jordan was actually seen being hit in the chest and then dragged into the house while screaming and crying now that to me that just makes me so sick to think that this poor child was living in this house of horrors. Honestly, think about it. This is everything that a child should not be going through. And not only the child going through it, but her little sister, at the time she was only a baby, but there are cases where people that are that small can actually remember those types of things. When my cousin was murdered, her son actually vividly remembers this. And I haven't really talked about that too much here on this channel, but he can remember his mother being choked to death. And he was only like, 17 months old. How that happens, I don't know. I'm not here to question that. I don't know if I had previously said this. I have so many notes here and I've wrote down so much, but McCullen is actually not Jordan's father. He's the live-in boyfriend to Jaylene, Jordan's mother. So let's flash forward to the next day. It's August 16th, 2016. There are over a hundred people out here assisting the police in actually trying to find Jordan, trying to find out what is going on. They have helicopters in the air again and they have like infrared cameras searching this pond again and they actually find nothing for the first bit of their search. However, eventually one of the people, I believe it was a cop, actually seen something and it triggered him to go and look in the woods and upon him going into the woods, they find a pair of children's flip-flops. At this time, the people that are actually assisting in the search are called off and told to get away from the scene because they think they may have found something and it turns out that they actually find Jordan Dumont's body. She's actually found in a small hole wrapped up in a black fitted sheet with small tree limbs over her body. Now mind you that this is only about 700 feet from the home in which Jordan lived in. 700 feet. Can you imagine having a child going missing having all these people looking for them and then having their body found 700 feet from your home. That is not a very far distance at all. I'm just gonna say, if you are easily triggered, the next thing that I'm gonna be talking about is gonna be the autopsy report and the things that they found that caused Jordan to actually pass away. Please, if you are very easily triggered and you don't even have to be easily triggered for this to bother you, you may want to skip the end of this video because this is very, very sad. It was determined by the coroner in the autopsy report that Jordan actually died from blunt force trauma. This poor 32 pound child was actually struck so hard in the stomach that it caused internal bleeding and cuts in her stomach. I cannot even grasp how anyone could do this to a poor, pitiful, innocent child. This was a gorgeous child. 
there are things that I really like that get to me in animals, children, and old people. I just, I cannot fathom someone hurting a child in this way. It just tears me up. She had 10 or more wounds to her abdomen, 26 wounds to her legs and feet, and another 20 or more wounds to her arms and hands. Can you imagine what this child went through to have this much inflicted upon her? That is so much trauma. Like, I cannot even wrap my head around that. It was also determined that she had bleeding between her brain and her scalp. Shortly after Jordan's body had been found, McCullen, her mother's boyfriend, was actually charged and arrested for her murder. There is so much stuff that is not available to the public that describes how they figured this out. I have went through the timeline of things. I have looked all over the internet. I remember this story very vividly. I remember this actual news broadcast that I put in the intro of this video when this first happened. I was watching this and I just, I have so many questions why this person would do this to her. I just, I, I don't understand it. A gag order has been actually put into effect that would restrict any of the law enforcement that have investigated this, attorneys, social workers, to stop them from discussing this for some reason or another. I think it has something to do with them having pertinent details to why have this guy done this, but I am not entirely sure as to why. McCullen is actually now awaiting trial for this, and he is actually, I believe, having to be moved to a different county because this had so much media coverage here in our town that they could not find a jury that would not actually be unbiased. Honestly, I just don't understand how anybody could not find this guy guilty. I mean, this is pretty much a cut and dry case in my opinion. That's just how I feel about it. He obviously had some kind of rage and anger toward this child. Why, I don't know, but there's no excuse for you actually putting your hands on a child and hurting them, especially in the way that this child had to go through this up until her murder. The good thing, if there is anything to come out of this, is Jordan's father, he actually lives out of state, or he did at the time of Jordan's murder, is he is working to get a build pass called Jordan's Law. And Jordan's Law would actually, if you have a child, say, if you are not with the other parent, uh, of your child and you leave your child home with your boyfriend or girlfriend and they go missing or there's a homicide case that's brought from it, the person that is actually in custody, the parent that is actually in custody of the child is actually charged with a felony. Now, I did have some people look into this. This is still being trying to push through, but it's actually just sitting there. I have the bill. I will link it in the description box of this video if any of you guys want to look at it. Uh, I do think that this will would actually be a good thing because there's so many different cases in this instance where the other parent's not notified and, and just so many different things go on that the other parent may not be notified of. Like, I believe, and I'm not entirely sure, I cannot say for a fact, but I don't think that the father was notified of all these welfare checks and all these different welfare cases that were open in regards to Jordan because I seen an interview with him and he was holding a letter and I, he, I don't think he was aware of it. I do have to say this, Jordan's mother, Jaylene, was actually not charged or in any kind of connection to this case as of yet and I don't think that they're going to bring up charges on her. However, I do believe that she lost custody of her other daughter, the daughter of Mr. McCullen. There are some interesting things that I want to talk about that just kind of like boggled me for a little bit uh, when I was researching this. You guys feel free to comment down below what you think about this because as you know, my channel is about discussion. I want discussion about these types of things, um, how you feel about it and your feedback. You guys just listen to this. Christina McCullen, which is actually McCullen's brother, lived in the home for a short period of time and she actually witnessed all of this stuff going on with Jordan, her brother abusing her, and she never spoke up about it. There was actually two instances that she admitted in an interview that she was actually questioned and she did not say anything. She never spoke up or anything like that. Why this girl 
did not speak up and say, hey, there's a situation going on. She didn't have to say it in front of her brother. She could have said this in private. She could have done something. She could have spoke up and possibly saved this girl's life and I would not be making this video right now and this guy would not be sitting in prison for actually murdering Jordan Dumont. If you are in a situation and you are aware of a child being abused and you do nothing at all, I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that you should totally be charged equally to the person that actually committed the crime. That's just my opinion. You guys can say what you want about it. That's just how I personally feel. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And that is absolutely how I feel about that. Christina did actually move out around six months before this happened with Jordan. So she was not in the home at the time of Jordan's disappearance and then finding her body and her brother committing this horrible crime. However, shortly after Jordan's disappearance, Christina McCullen actually said that her brother said that he tried to resuscitate her, Jordan, and tried to do CPR. Now, why would he be telling his sister this? She did say that she went to the police with this and she never heard anything back, but why would he confide that in her? That just honestly, in my opinion, allegedly, this girl knew a little bit more about this situation than she probably let on. It just does not make sense to me at all. But you guys, this is the case of Jordan Dumont. I am going to try to see if this bill is going to be passed forward. I think it's just sitting somewhere in limbo. I know that there's like some kind of change.org petition right now and it only has like 250 signatures. I don't know that if I actually put it out there for you guys to sign, if it would make a difference at this point in time. If I find anything else out about that, I actually will tweet about it and I might make an update video because this guy will be going to trial very soon. Hopefully, and I have probably no doubt about it. This guy will be locked away probably for the rest of his life, rightfully so. But you guys, I hope you can take something away from this video. This poor, beautiful little girl lost her life because other people would not step up and step in and do their job. And another thing with this whole case is it has caused like this major controversy here in my town specifically because they cannot keep social workers. There was actually a riot and all kinds of things that went on uh, that were plastered all over the television when this girl passed away. People were quitting their jobs. I just feel like the justice system failed Jordan in the worst kind of possible way, <laughs> especially the child welfare system. If there were 49 events where the police were sent out to this home for domestic violence and domestic disputes and things like that, and five welfare cases opened up, something should have been done. There has to be something that has changed because this process is not working. But you guys, I hope you made it through this video. If you liked it, please give me a like. If you're new here, my name is Dustin. I do all kinds of videos. I have been really into true crime lately, and this is my first off case. But this video is getting sort of long. I hope you guys have a great night, great day, wherever you are at any point in time that you're watching this video, and I will see you on my next one. Bye.